It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And we're on the line this morning. Fascinating topic. Jeff Sheschel joins us. The book is Mercury Rising, John Glenn, John Kennedy, and the New Battleground of the Cold War. And gosh, we don't normally connect John Glenn to a topic such as the Cold War, but we learned from Jeff that we should. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. It's, Thanks for having me, Todd. I'm, I'm glad that you're with us here today. This is a terrific effort by you. This book is fascinating. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Well, how did we get to this topic, though, and, and how did it turn in your mind that you, you said to yourself, man, there's a great book in this? Well, you know, I've always been fascinated by the space race and the story of, of John Glenn. Um but I, I, I don't think I realized quite how dramatic it was um, and how significant it was until I started to, to do some research on the topic. I knew that he was the first American to orbit the Earth, and so that alone puts him in the history books. And his charisma, his character, they, they made him a, a star even before he was an astronaut. Uh, and I knew all of that, but I, I didn't quite understand until I began this project exactly why this stood out over the whole course of the space race. This flight in February 1962 stands out above all the others until, of course, you get to Apollo 11 and you arrive with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. And I wanted to understand that. And the reason I think that it did have that significance, it's in what you said a few moments ago, this was a Cold War contest. And I know that generally people understand that we were not racing against the, the, the Russians for, for fun. But why were we racing against the Russians? Because in 1960, as, as John Kennedy said when he was running for president, there was the sense that if the Russians control space, they can control the Earth. And it was a race to see who was going to dominate this new arena, if it was the United States we believed in, in our own uh, 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 commitment to peaceful purposes in space, that we were going to explore space for all mankind. If it was the Russians, there was a lot of concern in the United States that they were going to militarize space, they were going to build an armed space station, they were going to build even a nuclear base on the moon. Those were the stakes as people understood them at the time. All of that being the case, John Glenn seems to be the perfect person uh, for this particular mission, we have that public image of him and his humility, but uh, John Glenn was as tough as they come, wasn't he, as a pilot? He really was, and I think this is the, the John Glenn that, that most people don't know, because if you've seen, if you remember John Glenn as a senator where he was earnest but a little bit dull, if, you, if you've seen John Glenn in the, the movies, The Right Stuff and, and the others, he's a Boy Scout, he's a Sunday school teacher, and yet, he actually was, in fact, both of those things, a scout and a Sunday school teacher. But he was also, of all the Mercury 7 astronauts, the original group of astronauts, he was the most decorated combat veteran of all of them. He fought in World War II in the Pacific, and he fought in Korea. And he fought hard. You know, his, his wingman in Korea was Ted Williams, the, the Red Sox player. Uh, and, and Ted Williams said about John Glenn, he said, the man is crazy. The man is crazy. And the reason he said that was because he had seen Glenn in combat. And he saw that Glenn would fly faster, he would fly lower, he would fly into hostile fire and then turn around and instead of fleeing the scene, he would go right back in. He would wind up with, with holes in his plane, holes in his co cockpit. At one point, Glenn got a hole blown in the tail of his Panther jet the size of a basketball. And he somehow managed to get that plane back to base. And, you know, this was John Glenn in wartime. And John Glenn, the astronaut, uh, came across to the American public as a very genial and humble guy. And he was. But he was also a warrior. And as this space program is at its very infancy, John Glenn uh, was very, very much aware, wasn't he, of how dangerous this mission was that he was taking on, that all of them were taking on, about how it really was more than just an unknown world. It was it was completely um, a mystery to everybody about how space would work and how the space race would turn out. Absolutely. Uh, you know, 
these guys, all seven, they were experienced test pilots, and some of them, like Glenn, were combat pilots. They were used to mortal danger. They were used to taking chances with their lives, but this was a whole new world, as, as he said. And when they were test pilots, the experimental equipment was the plane, and the pilot was supposed to push it to its limits and see where it cracked, where, where the problems developed, so that they could be fixed. In this case, it was not only the equipment that was experimental, but the, the whole idea of a human being in the vacuum of space was an experiment. How would the human being react? Would he be able to see? Would would his eyes, uh, uh, you know, change shape in, in zero gravity so that he was unable to see? Would his nerve endings fire wildly, as some physiologists predicted? and uh, make it impossible for him to control himself? Would he go mad? I mean, these were some of the questions that were being seriously asked within NASA. So it was, it was, it was their lives on the line simply to sit on top of a rocket. But even once they got safely into space, the question of how they were going to react and whether they were going to survive was a very open question. And with all of that going on, there is a whole other aspect of this, and, and that's the story of, as you said, the motivation behind actually having a space program and leading that effort on behalf of the United States, John F. Kennedy. And uh, the interesting thing to me is how well you develop uh, the fact that Kennedy had to come to some understandings within his own mind as to what his goals were with the space program uh, and also as to what other people were thinking about the space program and what they had in mind for it. Exactly. You know, John Kennedy, we, we remember him for many things, but one of the biggest is the moonshot. He's the one who committed the country to going to the moon by the end of the decade. It's one of the boldest things, if not the boldest thing, any president has ever pledged. And, and we made good on, on Kennedy's promise. But I, I think what gets forgotten is how he got there. He made that announcement in late May of 1961, which is early in his presidency. But a lot, a lot had happened in those first four or five months of his presidency. And there was a lot going on around the world. Space was not at the top of his agenda. He knew that the United States needed to step up what it was doing in space. He was well aware, as he had campaigned in 1960, that the United States was dangerously behind in the space race. And he saw that as consequential. But he didn't have a plan to put America in first place. And so he essentially let it slide while he focused on Berlin, while he focused on Cuba, while he focused on Southeast Asia. Uh, and that seemed reasonable enough until the Russians succeeded in sending the first human being into space, Yuri Gagarin, in April 1961. And, and it, 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 it was a shock to the system. Even though it was much expected when it actually happened, it, it created almost a, a sense of panic in the White House. Something had to be done. The United States needed to demonstrate in some dramatic way that it was in the space race and that it was intended to compete. And that's how we got to the idea of going to the moon. The hope was that the Soviets were certainly going to maintain their lead for a while, but maybe by the end of the decade, if we set the goal as far away as the moon, maybe we could essentially leapfrog the Soviets by 1970. And that, in fact, is, is what we did. Jeff Shesha was our guest. The book is Mercury Rising, John Glenn, John Kennedy, and the New Battleground of the Cold War. I'm sure that, like me, a lot of people reading the book are going to say to themselves, I had no idea LBJ was so intimately involved in and intricately involved uh, in the development of the U.S. space program. That might have been my biggest surprise. Was that that much of a surprise to you? And what were some of the things you came across that really opened your eyes? It was a surprise to me. You know, Johnson is really one of the unsung heroes of the space program. It was Johnson, after the Soviets sent Sputnik into space in October of 57, Johnson, within 24 hours, was, was out front leading the charge against the Eisenhower administration, demanding to know how the United States had allowed the Soviet Union to get there first, and why was our program already so far behind. He held hearings uh, on Capitol Hill, and it was Johnson who really generated the political momentum more than anybody else did uh, for the creation of NASA, which happened the following year in 1958. And so when he becomes Kennedy's vice president, it seemed natural that Kennedy would appoint him the, the point man within the White House on space. Johnson was the chairman of the Space Council. 
and Johnson helped to pick the NASA administrator. He was he was very involved. And so when Yuri Gagarin becomes the first man in space, and that mood of panic that I described sets in instantly in the White House, Kennedy turns to Johnson and says, figure this out. What are we going to do? He sends him a memo and he says, what can we do that will allow us to win? And so Johnson, at this point, has been involved enough in, in uh, the discussion with NASA and, and everywhere else he has the answer already, and it's the moon. But he needs to line up the support within the government, within the scientific community, to put this presentation in front of JFK, to convince JFK that this is possible and that it's worth billions and billions of taxpayer dollars to get there to the moon. One of the very many aspects explored in the book, Mercury Rising, John Glenn, John Kennedy, and the New Battleground of the Cold War. Jeff Sheschel has written the book. Jeff, it's a wonderful, wonderful read. I have the feeling I could go on with another half hour with you here this morning, but we're out of time. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Todd. Thanks very much. Have a great day. You too. You too.